A deadly plane crash, the second in two weeks, believed to involve a student pilot and a flight instructor. Tonight, two people are dead, and the airport where it happened is closed until tomorrow evening. The crash was on a runway at Northeast Florida Regional Airport in St. Johns County. In fact, it was on the longest runway at the airport. Sky 4 was over the scene after the crash. The Cessna 152 caught fire after it went down, and there's not much left. The names of the two people who were on board have not yet been released. News for Jack's reporter Eric Avenet joining us now from the airport. Eric, what did witnesses see? Well, before I get into what a witness saw, let me first tell you that the Florida Highway Patrol, which is the agency conducting the initial investigation into this crash, they have now left for the night. However, they left the wreckage on the runway, which is why this airport remains closed. Now, as to that witness uh, I spoke with, he says he saw that plane. It was making its approach into uh, the airport, uh, right coming into the runway, when all of a sudden something went terribly wrong, causing that airplane to go nose first into the runway. Moments before the single engine Cessna 152 carrying two people crashed into the runway while in the process of landing, Dylan Cochran says he was watching the aircraft approach the airport when he noticed. He just started wiggling, his wings were going left and right, up and down, and next thing you know, he slams into the runway. It, it's a simple, basic airplane. News for Jack's aviation uh, expert Ed Booth says what Cochran describes suggests the plane had gone into a stall. That is indicative of the airplane nearing its minimum controllable airspeed, after which the wing stalls and it departs controlled flight, usually uh, nosing straight down. This computer-generated animation of a biplane is an example of what Cochrane saw as the Cessna was making its descent toward the runway, the wings tipping up and down, causing the plane to want to roll. Cochran says he saw the plane go nose first into the ground at a 45 degree angle. Had you ever seen anything like this before? No, I sure haven't, man. This is the flight path of the plane. According to FlightAware, the Cessna took off from Northeast Florida Regional Airport at 1.46 in the afternoon. By 2.26, radar was tracking the plane at 700 feet, traveling at a speed of 87 miles per hour. Booth says stall speed is at around 47 miles per hour. He believes something may have happened to the engine, causing the plane to lose speed and stall on approach to the runway. Unfortunately, radar does not track planes below 700 feet. Back here live, as I said earlier on, FHP is overseeing the initial crash investigation. However, come tomorrow, they will hand that investigation over to NTSB. Uh, again, this is why that aircraft is still on the runway as we speak, or shall I say the wreckage of that aircraft is still on the runway. Uh, as of now, this airport, again, remains closed, and it will remain closed until about 6 p.m. tomorrow. Reporting live in St. John's County, Eric Avignet, Channel 4, The Local Station. Eric, thank you. Today's crash happened less than two weeks after another deadly small plane crash involving a plane owned by a flight school in our area. A 66-year-old flight instructor and an 18-year-old student pilot were killed when their aircraft went down in the St. Mary's River June 18th. Police say it was the flight instructor's last day on the job and the student pilot was a recent graduate of Fernandina Beach High School.